now with that mystery surrounding the death of a Penn State student, the 19-year-old dying after falling down a flight of stairs at a frat party. And it may have been close to 12 hours before anyone called for help. ABC's Eva Pilgrim is there at uh, Penn State, has the latest on the investigation. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Robin. A lot of questions this morning about what happened inside this fraternity house and how a student ended up dead. This morning, police are investigating the death of a Penn State student found at the bottom of the stairs in this campus fraternity house. Just before 11 a.m. Friday, EMS responds to a 911 call from Beta Theta Pi. They find 19-year-old Timothy Piazza unconscious, injured but alive, rushing him to the hospital where he dies a day later. Fraternity members tell police the sophomore fell down the basement steps around 11 p.m., almost 12 hours earlier during a party. An autopsy revealing he had multiple traumatic injuries that the coroner believes were caused by the fall, noting he had alcohol in his system. While the coroner believes the death was accidental, what's not clear is why no one called for help until the following morning. The fraternity members are cooperating. We're in the process of obtaining video from inside the fraternity and we are working closely with Pennsylvania Office of Student Affairs. This morning, Piazza's family is remembering the engineering major and athlete as a vibrant young man. His brother, Mike, writing on Facebook that his sole mission in life was to make other people smile. This latest death at Penn State eerily similar to another here in 2009. 18-year-old Joe Dotto, a member of the Fiji fraternity, found dead at the bottom of a campus stairwell after a night of drinking. His death was ruled accidental. And the university temporarily suspending Beta as they investigate. The fraternity says they're hopeful that security cameras inside the house will shed some light on exactly what happened. Robin. Oh, yes. Eva, thank you. Joining us now is our senior legal correspondent, Sunny Haas. It's tough to talk about a story like it this. Is. Your heart goes out to that family of yeah. the young man. Under what circumstances could the fraternity members be held responsible in some way for the delay in contacting authorities? Well, I think we don't know enough because perhaps it's been ruled an accident and perhaps they didn't see him at the bottom of the stairs for 12 hours and when they saw him, they called. But what's unusual about this case, Robin, is that this is not a one-off. We had this happen in 2009 at the same university and I did some research last night. And do you know that since 2005 on college campuses, 60 kids have died under similar circumstances. Here's a graphic. It shows that, you know, you, you talk about hazing and you think these are hazing related deaths. Well, that's a small percentage. 60 kids have died uh, in, in this way. And, and so is the fraternity liable? Very, very possible. There was underage drinking going on. Mm -hmm. And certainly if the fraternity gave this kid alcohol knowingly that he was a minor, there's a problem there as well. But what was shocking to me is that this is not that unusual because when you hear frat house you might automatically think hazing which was not does not appear to be the case exactly here but when we're talking about all these various cases yeah. schools all across the country where do college officials what what, what role do they play you know I, I think the question is do colleges our colleges owe a duty to protect these kids and the courts have sort of been all over the place but the bottom line is I think so mm. I, I think the colleges are going to be held responsible for conversation for, to have. For this. All right, we'll check you out as always on the view today. I'll be there. All right, Sonny, <laughs> thank you very much.